observations and answers. That's what we do here on The Professional Noticer. I cannot tell you how excited I am. I mean, you know, every now and then we get a guest on here who has observations and answers. And uh, that's that's what we got today. Not not just that, but we've got somebody that you know, somebody that I've known for a long time, uh, part of a group that has had over 30 top 10 hits, over a dozen number ones, um, 12 gold albums, three platinum albums, a double platinum album. Please welcome Joe Bonsell from the Oak Ridge Boys. Joe, thank you for being here. Andy, it's great to be with you today, man. I love you, man. You're a good friend, have been for, gosh, decades, and uh, I haven't seen you in a long time, too, man, so this is really an honor. Well, I, I appreciate that. How's 20, we hadn't seen anybody for a while. How's 2020 going for you so far? Well, I'll be honest with you, just like everybody else, man, I mean, the music business is dead. <laughs> it, yeah. it, don't, it don't matter if you sing rock and roll, country, hip hop, if you're on Broadway, if you play first violin at the symphony, it don't matter. You're home and you're, yeah. all, and, and, and you're out of work. And, um, and everybody that works for you is out of work and everybody that works for them is out of work. And you look at theaters and arenas and everybody that uh, works like light guys, sound guys, truck drivers, bus drivers, merch guys, wow. everybody's dead in the water. Last March 14th, we did a big show in Myrtle Beach, and it was a big sold-out theater, man, and we were rocking our tails off, man. And we got back on that bus, eating sushi, listening to loud music, having no idea that when that bus parked at home, it was going to stay parked for just about the whole year. So, And that was, Mar year. that was March 14th. Yes. Do you, do you know that March 6th, I was at a party, and uh, Dwayne was there. Mm -hmm. And Richard was there, and I was talking to Dwayne, and Dwayne said, yeah, 150 dates. We're doing 150 dates this year. And then a week later, pow. Pow. Unreal. Man, if 2020 were a hula hoop, it'd be made out of barbed wire. I'm convinced. <laughs> so, well, we, uh, we've played about six shows. We had, uh, in July, we went back to work for a couple of days. We had a 10-day West Coast trip booked, and two of those dates stayed. One was private. So yep. we flew out there and then got in vans and drove hundreds of miles in vans like we did when we were kids. <laughs> and we played those dates, you know, just to get the money to keep operations. Sure, sure. And, and then we had two shows in August, one in September, and we have one show in, in, as a private date in Michigan this Saturday. And that's all we've had until we get to... To Christmas. To Christmas Opryland, yeah. Yeah, because you guys have a big deal going on there. I, that's going to be cool for a lot of people to get to do something and see you guys. T tell us about that. Well, here's the cool thing. You know, for 30 years, we've had a big Christmas tour on the road. You know that. We right. And it, it's, yeah, that is, that is if if somebody said, what should I go see of the Oaks? I, I, I would say, you know, wait till December, see the Christmas show, because it's just the best of the year. It really is. And it was Oak Ridge Boys and Kenny Rogers used to be the Christmas acts out there. In fact, we got the idea for a Christmas tour back in the in the late 80s, early 90s from Kenny. He took yeah, I saw a few of those. Yeah, he took us out on the road with a man and it was great. And we said, we can do this. We've got Christmas albums out. So Right, right. But anyway, man, last year we agreed to a two-year deal with Opryland where we would bring the Christmas tour to Nashville and do a 20, do a 29-show residency at Gaylord Opry Lane for Christmas. People come and they have dinner, big dinner cooked up gourmet style by the chefs there. Then a big Christmas show by the Oak Ridge Boys. And we've got that thing going uh, this year. This year it started and so far it is on. They are promoting it. They are doing everything to do it correctly and safely. And right. they've put it in a bigger ballroom than normal so that uh, they can do spacing better. But it's going to be a big deal. And, and for us, wow, it's work at the end of the year. It will help us a lot and help yeah. people a lot. So we're very thankful to the good Lord for that. But at the same time, how cool to be doing our Christmas show right here at home. Run down to Opryland and sing every night, come back home. That's, that's right. like us, man. But it's and if you, thrilled. And thrilled. if you have never been, if you've never been to that Gaylord Opryland at Christmas time, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't even know how they decorate those trees outside, but it's something to see. And um, in fact, we're going to do the so, tree lighting on, on on November thirteenth. We're doing the tree lighting ceremony down there to really? the whole deal. So, and you Man. know, 
as far as Nashville goes, I mean, there's a lot of Christmas stuff here normally. We've played the Skirmahorn three different times down there, you know, where the symphony plays. Right, but, right. The Skirmahorn's closed. Tennessee Performing Arts Center is closed. Disney on Ice and all that stuff and the Nutcracker, none of that stuff's happening. So if you want to go to something Christmassy in Nashville, you're it. <laughs> the, you're it. You're it. I think that's awesome. When did you join the Oaks? When, you know, because I remember, I know when the first hit was, and I'll tell you how I know it in a minute, but when did you, when did you join the Oaks? I joined the Oaks before the hits. The hits started coming in 1977. I joined the Oaks in 1973, October. I'm celebrating my anniversary this year. And um, I was 25 years old when I joined the Oak Ridge Boys, and I'm 72 sitting here looking at you today. So I've been an Oak Ridge Boy almost my whole life. Dude, you guys have you haven't lost anything. I mean, you know, you you guys are unbelievable on stage. Your voices are all great. And I I remember, see, I know you said the hit started in 77. And I remember that because I graduated from high school in 77. And I remember, you know, she played tambourine with a silver jingle at the, the Y'all Come Back Saloon album, right? Yes, indeed. And it was album of the year that year. And Saloon was a big hit, as was You're the One and I'll Be True to You after it. And then yep. I started a whole string of them back then. And uh, a, lot, a lot of music people and historians think that the Y'all Come Back Saloon album itself kind of kind of set a whole new paradigm in the business. I, I still, I love, I love all the songs on that album. You know, I've I've got that uh, now, obviously on my iPod, and but I had the I had the LP, I had the LP, and, and isn't I, it cool? The know. vinyls are back. Yeah, yeah. We, we released the Christmas album last year called Down Home Christmas, and uh, it's a really cool album. Dave Cobb produced it, and um, and it just now is about to release in a, in a green vinyl for this year. Wow, so, right, there right is a song for Opryland. There is a restaurant down here in Orange Beach, and it's uh, it's called The Gulf, and it's a real popular place. It's a very cool place because when they were building it, we were all going, what the heck? Because it's made out of containers, okay? You know, those big old metal containers, and they welded forever, but it's this huge place, and it's right on the water, right at the Perdido Pass, and they play albums they play lps there and um so it's it's you're right it's back in a big way and i think there's a it's a different sound different feel it just is can i can i tell you a funny story with, with that, that you please really laughed just a couple days ago please i was cracking the new book and and one of your protagonists in the book there keely or yeah keely. right yeah keely keely, okay. keely. Keely mentions and reflects upon a dry cleaners that she had where the person was just kind of miserable, but they all went to it because it was the only dry cleaners. Man, I had that in my neighborhood growing up in Philly. We had an old Romanian woman named Mrs. Tuma Falakia, right? <laughs> she was horrid. And everybody went to her because she was the only dry cleaner in the neighborhood, right? It would be like, hey, hey, Joey, take daddy's shirts down to Mrs. Tuma. Everybody called her Mrs. Tuma because nobody could say Salakian. Right, <laughs> I mean, she was the type of person, man. If you're bowling in her yard, she kept it. Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, did I get a laugh out of that the other day? That is great. <laughs> that is great. You know, then that, and that's one of those kind of things. It's kind of universal, I suppose, it, it, because we all had those things like where you know you get your clothes back and they smell like smoke. It, it, you know, and kids, it kids today. Uh, my boys don't even know what mimeograph machine ink smells like. Remember, you get you go in school and get your test papers, and your hands would smell like that purple stuff. Yeah, that they turned on a crank like. Then they then they yeah. turned crank the. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're old, haven't we, Andy? I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I was thinking. You know, I was so excited about about doing this with you because I got to spend a lot of time with you guys, and and I tell people about. You guys a lot uh, because you guys were you guys were nice to me and just very just very encouraging and very cool to me uh, before I had really ever done anything you know and and that's not always the case in in this that's business not. and and I but I just have has been with us. 
It always has been with us. It's an ORB doctrine. We treat people right, man. How many times do you think it is we pull up to a fair and some artist has just left there the night before that everybody in the place hated? They hated oh, yeah. their people. They hated, they hated him or her. They hated the, the road manager. They hated everything. Yep. And they were so glad to see the Oak Ridge Boys pull in because they know that this is what's going to happen. We're going to show up. We're going to smile at everybody. We're going to shake hands. We're going to go out on stage, sing, no extra baggage at all. And right. then we're going to get our check and get back on the bus, shake hands again, get back on the bus, say, see you next time. And that's why we've played some of the same fairs 10, 15 years in a row. Or, over or, and over again. Years. So, you know, you're being, exact. Being nice to people, especially your people on the show with you, man, I, I think that's a lot easier than being a butthole. Well, yeah, you know, you would think, but. It takes less energy. Uh, you know, I, I, there was, it's funny that you say that you pull up at a fair and somebody was there the night before, you know, I toured with Joan Rivers for a couple of years. And, and so when I toured with Joan, we went, there was one time we were at the World's Fair in Vancouver and it had been going for a hundred, about a hundred days. It was a hundred day fair and we were in the nineties. And, and so, uh, they're backstage it, you know, it's like one of these kind of things built just for that and right. new wood and everything. And and uh, up above the stage in the back were pictures of because every single night they had a star there. Right. And and so the star's picture was a, and there just like 90 something of them. But as we looked, there were three of them that were upside down. They'd been put up upside down. And um what and we said, why why are those upside down? And he said, because we hated them. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay. And and you know, and and one one of them, I I'll just tell you, one of them was Diana Ross, and I know you're not surprised, but because we've all we've Keep all up. had those stories, yeah. But uh, but it was so funny, yeah, upside down. And you guys, you guys have been so nice, except for the time that you threw my cookies away. You don't remember that, do you? I don't think I do. Yeah, I see. This is this is this is my probably my silver medal Joe Bonzel story. I have a gold medal story, but this is probably my silver medal story. And I've told this to a lot of people, and I. I when you and I were talking on the phone several months ago, I said something about it and I could tell you didn't remember it. And so I didn't even tell you because I wanted to do this in front of people. I wanted to re I wanted to remind you. This. But we were at a fair and I was uh, your opening act. I was opening for the Oak Ridge Boys and I had just started doing Nashville Now. I had just started getting some television. And so it, for the first time, some people were starting to recognize me. And, and uh, I, I, you know, you guys would stay on the bus because you, you just couldn't walk around the fair. But I could walk around the fair. And so I would walk around and I was walking. And this woman and her daughter came up and they said, Andy, hey. And I said, hi. And they said, we watch you on Nashville now, and it's good to meet you. And I said, oh, thank you. And, and he said, we brought you uh, these cookies. And I said, oh, thanks. I, I will, I'll give them to the guys right when I go in the bus. And, and she said, no, we, we brought them for you. I was like, really? You, for, you brought them for me? And she said, yeah, we brought them for you. We knew you were going to be here, and we brought them for you. I was like, for me? And yeah, I mean, do you— I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm glad, but you didn't bring them for the Oak Ridge for me, for me. You got them for me. Yes, we got them for you. I was like, well, thank you. I, I just like, I was just so excited. So I come on the bus, and I've got my cookies, and uh, and there's you know there's Joe and Joanne and Richard and William Lee and everybody sitting there, and I come in and you know Joanne says, what you got? I said, well, I you know I had some cookies this uh, lady uh, they they baked them for me they watched me on Nashville now and so she got me these cookies and you stood up and you said can I see those and I said sure and you took the plate of them and turned around and you dumped them in the garbage can and you, then you turned to me my mouth is open and you turned around to me and said don't ever eat anything these people bring you 
You don't know who these people are. You don't know what is in those cookies. You don't know if you didn't look at her. You don't know if you looked at her wrong. Don't eat this stuff. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. That was an Oak Ridge boy rule. You know, I, yeah. I, we've relaxed it over the years. I got to tell you, we've got a song on our Christmas show every year called Christmas Cookies. And people bring cookies to the stage and I usually eat them on stage while we're singing the cookie song. OK, right, but right. We've obviously relaxed our rule. But back then, people used to bring us cakes. And the funniest thing that happened with us on that, we had this big old cake on the bus. That was huge. And we were driving on out of town after the gig and we used to spin off on them. We'd like put them under the bus tire and... <laughs> and spin off on the cake it used to be a, a little ceremony because we wouldn't eat the cake either we don't uh, yeah uh -huh. cake, right so anyway man here we are at this truck stop fueling up the bus comes around the corner at near the way you go out of the truck stop i take the cake around i put it under the wheel and we squeal off on it and we look and there's those people that gave us the cake in the car they had followed us and they were and they were aghast that we spun off on their cake oh my god it was so embarrassing. We never did it again. <laughs> oh, no. no. That was good old Oak Ridge boy humor right there. Probably oh. the same with your cookies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, but, but I, but I, you know, I see, I see the wisdom in it, but I, it was just like, it just like, it's like, wow, this is the first time anybody ever brought me anything. And uh, Joe threw it in the garbage. Uh, so, you know, in all your, your time with the Oaks, what do you, what song I think people would be interested in knowing, like, what song is your favorite? And what song, uh, there's three questions. What song is your favorite? What song surprised you that it did as well as it did? And what song that just blew your mind that it didn't do as well as you thought it would do? Well, to answer your first question, for me, for me personally, I'd have to go along with I never hurt. I guess it never hurts to hurt sometime. Love first that all, song. First of all, Randy Van Warmer was a great writer, died too soon. You know, he passed away of leukemia at age 49. He wrote a lot of songs that we've recorded over the years, but Never Hurts was a very special song. Right. And it was my mother's favorite Oak Ridge Boy song. And the day she died, I sang it to her. Wow. To her at, on, on, she asked me to sing it to her, and I did. On her, just me and her by the bed. And it was uh, a great memory. So every night I sing, it, it, you know, we do s change the set list up every night. It may not be on the set every night, but on the right. nights that it is, and I do the set list. But when I put it on there and I sing it, I always, I always can kind of picture my mother listening to it. So that would be my favorite one from my heart. The, the big surprise would obviously be Elvira. I right. mean, we were recording an album in late 1980 called Fancy Free. We'd had five gold albums. We'd already been on the big tours with Kenny Rogers and Dottie West, and we were like the hot young group, five gold albums, everything going our way, winning awards. And in 1980, we put together a really nice album. And at the last minute, this whole song plugger from A. Cuff Rose Publishing comes into the session and gives Ron Chancey Elvira. I said, look, Dallas Fraser had this out years ago, man. I saw a bar band do it in Texas. And I thought, boy, the Oak Ridge Boys could nail this. They've never done nothing quite like it. And I just had to pitch it. And we all said, hey, why not? We went in there and in two takes, Ron had the idea of instead of doing the Yoon Papa Mau Mau's the way they did it, to have Richard do it. And right. me the lead. And I never even heard the original but one time. So I put my own spin on it. And we laughed about it all left. Three months later, the album's about to come out. And we're in the Pacific Northwest. And I said, we've got a few new songs here. Uh, we're, in fact, I can tell you where we were. We were in, we were in uh, uh, Spokane. Really? Okay. Yeah, at the old opera house. I said, we've got a few new songs here from the album. I know people don't like to hear a lot of new songs. They like the old stuff. But hey, man, we're proud of this. Want to sing a few. Well, we did Elvira. The place, I swear to God, Andy, man, they stood up and cheered as if we gave them a condo in Montserrat. <laughs> it was crazy. We backed up and said, whoa. Well, we sang it again. And it was the same response. We came out as an encore later in the show and went ahead and did Elvira again. Well, that happened four nights in a row, and we called MCA and said, hey, we've got something crazy going on out here with this Elvira. It needs to be a single. They right. agreed, released it. The end of March, it came out. By June, it had sold a million singles with just Country Airplay. And then while we released the song Fancy Free for the summer as the second single, right. it spilled over into the pop world, and the whole summer of 81, everybody in this country was singing Oom Papa Mau Mau with the Oak Ridge Boys. 
to this uh. day, to this day, when I say, let's sing Elvira, people stand up like it's the Hallelujah Chorus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Just, You've seen it. It's insane. And I never, who would have ever guessed that that would happen with that song? That is just, that, that is amazing. And I remember when that came out, too. I just, I just remember all that, that time and... I mean, that, it, played it that, every every baseball game, major league, minor league, little league, church outings. We would go. I would be driving in my car and see a van of teenagers going by with the windows open, singing Elvira. Yeah, Everybody yeah. was singing it. And and oh, listen, day, yeah, I was on a, on, a, on a Gaither cruise, and they did it. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. So well, here's a funny one. Here we just recorded a song with the Gaither vocal band. It's right, old gospel song, and it came out so well. The Bill wanted to do a video on it, so he says, "Man, come on up here to Indiana one day, and let's just shoot a video, us and the band and the vocal band." So we did just last week. So we go really? up there and we record this whole song with them, and it's called "That's Gospel, Brother." It's an old, old song, and it's redone, really kind of cool. And right at the very end, on the fade, he wanted Richard to go "Oom Papa, Oom Papa, <laughs> now, now," and he did. <laughs> it made no sense. No, no sense at all with the gospel song we just sang with the Gaither vocal band. Made no sense at all. But they gave Richard a live mic to add an oom papa mau mau at the end of it. I mean, this is that's the kind of crazy stuff that's going on for Hey, everybody you. gets everybody gets the reference. Everybody gets the reference. You know, there was a uh, there's a friend of ours, an older I, I hesitate to even tell this story, but there is an is an older lady yeah. and she had smoked for years and years and years. And her voice, her speaking voice was really, really low like this. And, and it was, uh, after Christmas, my sister was at our house. They, they were at our house and this lady, and we were playing apples to apples. And I, man, I don't know if I should tell this, but I'm going to, we were all playing apples to apples. And, and so this, you, you know, just just eight of us around the table, and and at some point we took a break, and I kind of go back to the bedroom. And my sister follows me back, and and I said, "Are you having a good time?" And she said, "Oh yeah." I said, um, "You recognize her, don't you?" She goes, "What?" I said, "You don't you you recognize her?" She goes, "No, no." I said, yeah, for, for a long time, she used to been the bass with the Oak Ridge Boys. And, 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 and Christy just fell out. Well, then when we're playing, every now and then I'd just look across the table at Christy and go, oom, papa, mau, mau. And she would just like fall out. Nobody knew what was going on, but, I, but Christy did. But that, I mean, man. So what, about the, so what about the song that you thought should have done better than it did? Well, back after Elvira, if you remember, actually, uh, we had Fancy Free, and then we did the first Christmas album and did Thank God for Kids, and, and then Bobby Sue. Right. So most people think Elvira Bobby Sue came back to back because they both got a lot of pop play. Yeah. Well, you know how you always go to that well just one more time too soon. I had a bunch of old 45s, and I was trying to find something Elvirish. And I found that one, uh, gonna find her, that old song. Yeah, well, yeah. We cut it, didn't sound very good. Then we cut a song, what was the one with Bulldog drumming in it? it old, old rock and roll. Well, that didn't sound so good either. But then I found So Fine by the Fiestas. And we recorded So Fine. So fine, so fine, yeah. My baby, so doggone fine. I thought it was great. And I thought it would be a smash. And we even did a video on it. That was the early days of video. And we shot a video on So Fine. Kind of right. a funny video, too. But you can tell it's by the timing, it was early 80s. But it was funny. I had big hair like this. And we're singing. <laughs> uh, so I fine. remember the big hair. And I thought So Fine was just the coolest thing. And it went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh, it went nowhere, man. You still, you can still find it on an old album somewhere. I guess it's on the Bobby Sue album. Did we actually record it? I got to look. I forgot. But man, it just went nowhere. And I mean, we—I thought we sang it great. I thought it sounded great. I thought it was a smash. Isn't that amazing? Like Elvira, but nope. It went yeah, right that's down. amazing. I mean, my the book. And then we that, followed it up with American Made, and American Made went big. So yeah, I, my I baby is American Made. 
A lot I of people love don't that realize song. that So Fine was in the middle there and it did jack. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, it's, to me, that's an interesting question to ask because my favorite book that I ever wrote is The Heartmender. And I, you know, nobody even knows I've written it, really. I, it's like, that's probably the least read of my books. But when people find it, they really like it. But I don't know why. Nobody knows I've, I've written it. But, I don't remember if I read The Heartbender, to be honest. I don't I, 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 I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Oh, but, but I know I've now, read most all your stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm into the new one right now. Well, I, this is one thing that I wanted to talk about with, uh, with you. I don't know if you've gotten to the part in the book uh, about the peace table. No. Have you gotten? Okay, well, you will. I'm sitting at it. And if we could back up the camera, you would see that the table legs are books. That's the table legs, the four, mm -hmm. the legs. And um, and your book, from my perspective, is in one of the table legs of this book that's in that in that book. And that's one of my books and, that nobody's read but you. Well, <laughs> d d no, there's a lot of people who read it because I have promoted that book. I mean, now you've written ten books. I mean, you're you know you you're not only a songwriter and not only an Oak Ridge boy, but you're a for real author. I mean, you, you know anybody can write a book like, hey, this is what we did, I guess. But but like GI Joe and Lily, that book. Oh my gosh! I mean that book, and you know, then you know how high a compliment that is, Andy. I read a couple of pages of you, and I go, "Whoa!" And I call myself a writer sometimes. Look, look at Andy, baby. I mean, you're a, you're a great writer, Andy. I love how you write. Well, I listen. It, there there have been a lot of things that have gone into, you know, me working at that, and and um, and you you know you guys. You guys have been part of that. I, I can't tell you. I, you know, a lot of times people want me to talk about some of the people that I know or some of the stuff like that. And and I always enjoy talking about you guys for a bunch of different reasons. You know, uh, one is you're good guys. You've managed to get along. You've managed to have, I mean, you've had hits in four decades. I don't want to make you feel old, but I looked, I mean, and for somebody to just even be in business after that long, especially in this business, but you guys have had hits in four decades. And well, it's an incredible blessing, man. God's been good to us, man. I give him all the honor and the praise. The fact is we've had good health in our group. The four of us, we've had our little problems we don't talk about. Everybody does when you get older. You have a little ache here, a pain there, something that needs a fix sure. here. But for the most part, man, we have done well, and God has allowed us to be able to still sing well. We still have voices that we, when we go out on stage and sing. I'm just one of them, so I can say this. That's the sound of the Oak Ridge Boys, man. Dwayne's singing his tail off. Golden's spot on. Richard's low as can be, and I'm right. pumping it out as hard as I can. And, man, the fact that we can still do that, is why we still do it. Because yeah. to me, if we couldn't do it at that level where people pay money and sit in a seat to hear you sing, if we weren't that good anymore, then it would be time to kind of kind of retire. Kind of like we are this year. I said to my right. wife in the summer, I said, am I retired? She said, you might be. You might be. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Wait till Christmas. You know, when uh, there was uh, several years ago, Richard, he had like knee surgery or something. And uh, Achilles Gene... Tension. Okay, Achilles tendon, and Gene mm -hmm. stood in for right. him. Okay, and so this is a curious question: If you had Achilles surgery, who would you have replace you for a few dates? It would have to be Jimmy Fortune. Yeah. Jimmy you know, Jimmy's out there on his own now, singing since the Statlers have uh, retired, and he's done really, really well. And I. I think I think Jimmy could easily step in here and 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 fill it out for a couple of days if I were to get sick. We've I've never had to be repl oh whoa that's not true. What's the matter with me? I had vocal trouble about it ten years ago. I sometimes forget about it, where I had a a real vocal problem that I had to go right. in vocal rest. I didn't need operation or nodes or nothing, but I had strained it. What happened was we had a, a four week tour of the Pacific Northwest into Canada, 
and I wasn't feeling good. And every night I went out there and sang sick and my voice got worse and worse and worse and worse and never really came back. So I had to go on a vocal rest, which healed it. We had a bass player back then uh, who could really sing good. And fortunately we had him and he would come up to the front. I, I stayed out there. I don't want people to think I was like dead or something. So I would drop <laughs> a little banjo, you know, laugh and smile, <laughs> wave, and then go around and listen to the Oak Ridge Boys sing with another guy singing my part. And it was really cool to sit out there in the audience and hear the Oak Ridge Boys. I never got to do that. Wow. So, so yeah, th there was a time there, but uh, thank thankfully Jimmy Fulbright was his name. He was able to sing my part and get the guys through the show. And, well, you uh, know, if you, if you, if you did, if you if you took a couple of days off, and Jimmy Fortune, uh, all of a sudden did your part for a couple of days, he would be the answer to one of the greatest greatest trivia questions in country music history, wouldn't he? He would. Who be. had who has sung with the Statler Brothers and the Oak Ridge Boys? I mean, and all in the Hall of Fame together. All in the Hall of Fame together. He, have you heard? Have you heard what he's doing with? Uh, uh, Ben Isaacs, I know you know Ben, uh, oh. with with Ben, Mike Rogers, and uh, and yeah, and Bradley Walker. I mean, man, what they're doing, they they sound great. It is, they are awesome. They are so awesome. In fact, the other day, I didn't know Mike. I knew the other guys well. In fact, I've known Bradley since he was born. His really? parents used to bring a little crippled Bradley Walker out to hear us sing in Huntsville, Alabama, in our heyday when he was just a baby. Are you and serious? I, I go that far back with Bradley. We've been brothers and friends all these many years. I love that boy. And he does sing his tail off. God, can and he last sing? Time we, last time we did a show in Huntsville, he came out and sat, Dwayne sat down and he came out and did Dwayne's part on Fancy Free. And we sang it up there with little Bradley in his wheelchair singing Fancy Free Man. I'm telling you what, it was so incredible. I'll never forget it. And uh, so, yes, they are really, really singing and sounding just great. Uh, I called Ben though, and I said, "Dude, you got you got to get a name. I mean, you know, come on, you got to have a name for this because you. I, I mean, looking up YouTube, looking up Fortune Walker Rogers Isaacs. I, who can remember that? Come on, get a name, but because they're 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 something else. And and Don't Harry, they no, no, they they, na they named the the album is named Brotherly Love. Oh, okay, and it, it's killer." Is killer, and I, I was I have been amazed watching Bradley because you know that they one of the songs that they, they're all over the map with with that album. I mean, they're doing uh, like an Eagle song. They do oh, some yeah. original stuff. They do That's a Don Kevin. Yeah, yeah, Statler's name. They do a, a um, a, they do a gospel thing, a Don Williams thing. I mean, they're all over the map, but they do that old song. Uh, Daddy sang bass, Mama sang tenor. And, you know, it's Bradley doing that. And as many times as I've heard that song sung over the years, it's always somebody singing the lead. And then you go to this guy for Daddy sang bass and this guy for Mama sang tenor. But Bradley sings the lead and then drops that register, just drops the hammer out of nowhere on that Daddy sang bass. And he nails it. It's just, it's kind of stunning. I was totally shocked at Bradley Walker singing bass at all. I didn't know he could do that. I've heard him sing in his country voice and, and right. like I said, he sings with us. And I remember when he put out his first album and it won International Bluegrass Association Award for a male vocalist of the year. I, couldn't, right. I, I went to the awards that night to support Bradley. And he came wheeling out there and won that award. Man, I cried for an, an hour, man, because like I say, I've known him since he was this big. And there he is with this disability that, that he's had all these many years. Uh, years ago, the Oak Ridge Boys and him did Elvira on the Muscular Dystrophy Telethon. I mean, we just have done a lot of stuff with Bradley over the years. Right. To see him excel like he's doing right now and to see, I'm so happy he's singing because he sings so well. He sings better than half the guys on country radio. Oh, he yeah. You know, Gaither says, Bill, Bill says that Bradley has one of these classic voices. And what Bill said, and, I, and both of us knew both these guys, and I thought, yeah. He, he said Bradley is a combination of Randy Travis and Keith Whitley, and I get that. Yeah, I throw I, a little I get Brad that. Paisley in there, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, but you're, you're right. You're kind of surprised 
that he can sing that low because now Richard, you know, when Richard talks, oh. you know, Richard has that low voice. And so you're not really surprised that he's a bass, but Bradley has that, you know, then he can take it down. It's, it's pretty stunning. You know how when Richard calls you on the phone, you know how he how he calls you on the phone. He, you, you'll answer the phone. You go, "Hello, Joe. This is Richard." <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's like, who, who else would it be? You know? <laughs> oh my gosh! Always, hey, always says it. This is Richard. Now here's one more story that okay. I I don't I I don't know if you will remember this, but um, is this the gold one. Yeah, this is the gold medal oh. Joe Bonzel story. Okay. okay. And I don't know if you'll remember this, but we were doing doing the tour with Kenny, you know, which I did for a while. It was mm -hmm. it was me, the Oak Ridge Boys and Kenny, or me, Ronnie Millsap and Kenny. It was mostly you guys. And so so Dwayne comes to me and then like does this to Richard and William Lee and and they said, It's Joe's birthday tonight, and we need to do something to him. Do you remember this? Do you have any uh, idea where I'm, I'm going? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And, and so, so he said, we need to do something to him. And so it's his birthday. What can we What can we do? I thought a second. I said, I'll tell you. I, I, I'll tell you what we'll do. But you guys have to make sure that when I'm out there, that you keep Joe busy. Don't let him see any of what I'm doing when, when I'm out. Because I'm first, right? And... You know, you guys would wander in and around. Sometimes you'd see some of what I was doing. Sometimes you wouldn't. And, and so I said, keep him out of there. They said, okay, okay. And I said, and so just be ready because you would always do the introductions. You know, right in the middle of the Oak Show, you would introduce the guys, okay? And so so it, I, I told the audience that night, we're in an arena, you know? I mean, there's 15,000 people there. And I said, okay, uh, I've just talked backstage with uh, three of the Oak Ridge Boys, and uh, one of them, Joe Bonzel, it's his birthday, all right? And the others have something that uh, we're, we've kind of planned for Joe, and, he, and we want you to be a part of it. And here's what we're going to do. Joe, at some point during the show, Joe will introduce all the Oaks, and and he'll, he'll uh, when he introduces... Uh, Richard, he'll tell a little bit of him, his son, uh, Richard Servant, and, you know, go crazy and clap just like you always do. And then he'll say, no, 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 from Bruton, Alabama, here's William Lee Cove, and, and clap, clap. And then uh, da, 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 the ace, the, the lead singer, here's Dwayne Allen, and everybody clap. And he will say, and I'm Joe Bonzo, thank you very much. I remember. Nothing. You remember? I remember, it, yes. <laughs> I mean, and I told him, I said, do not make a sound. Do not yeah, make a sound. Yeah, 15,000 people, you heard crickets. Yeah. And, so it's, and what was so funny is when you did it, it was, it, it, I, I've thought about this a lot because it, it was such a professional response you had because you thought that your microphone didn't work. Because <laughs> what you did was you went, and I'm Joe Bonzo, thank you very much. And I'm Joe Bonzo. Thank you very much. Because you thought you, Mike didn't work. And, it's a, and so you said it again. I'm Joe Bonzo. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then you stopped. <clears throat> and you looked back and the other three guys were on the other side of that circle. And you just like laid down on the stage. I, uh, I mean, that was so fun. Well, you got me, man. I remember thinking then to myself, I remember thinking, geez, what did I do? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> no, wrong, dude. Oh my gosh! Did you just so, hear my cat scratching on a scratching post a minute ago. Did you hear a little? <laughs> I did, but you guys have a lot of cats. Yeah, well, we're we're down to, to we, we have just four now. We lost a couple this year. In fact, this is really kind of a unique thing being an author and all. I wrote a story on on, on my little Sally Ann. She was twenty two years old. I wrote a story about her. And it's not really a children's book. It's just kind of a nice. It's not published. It's just a nice little story about a really cool cat. And there's a great story behind how we got the cat and how she passed away and everything. It's just a, a pretty little heartwarming story <clears throat> with some nice gospel overtone to it. It's, it's, it's just nice. And the people who published G.I. Joe and Lily loved it, but they turned it down bec unless I could like rewrite it as a book, like a Molly book, like the children's books, like Molly the Cat. And right. I, think, I didn't write this as a children's book, though. I, I, I don't want this is.
the children's book. It's just a book for cat lovers. It might even be just a little gift book, but, but you know, but they, I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. But what I'm getting at is I'm going to send you the manuscript just for fun. So okay. you can read it. It's a short, it's a cute little thing. I think you'll like it. It'll, yes, Good. we are cat people here, man. I've got cats, cats, cats. We love cats. And That's I'm down great. the floor now. We, we once had nine. Oh my god! Wow, we once had nine cats, but we're so down that's like four. that's like eighty-one lives. Yeah, it's a lot of lives. I mean, I mean it was eight, nine cats, nine lives per cat. I mean, that's a lot of lives there. Well, the two cats who came to us at one time from the outside, and and they they stayed outside half the time. Both of them, they both died young. And outside cats, all the, all our other cats have always been indoor kitties, and so they. Uh, they don't get in, into quite as much trouble that way, really. But you know. we've got two. We've got two cats, and they're outdoor cats. But they're working cats. Ours right. are working cats because we, you know, live in. There's these little bitty the pygmy rattlers uh, where we live. The little rattlesnakes, and and when we had, uh, you know, we had the boys, or when the boys were young, I was terrified that one of them was going to crawl into one of those. Things and somebody said to me, he said, Get a couple of cats. I was like, Really? And I said, Oh, yeah, just get cats and you'll never see another snake. And the only yeah. time we've seen a snake is when those cats have jumped in a palmetto bush and come out with a snake, but they're they're great. And, and in fact, people ask sometimes, um, at the end of this episode, we always do a fake commercial. At, at the end of every episode, and we always say, you, you remember you'd watch the old game shows and they would say, so-and-so's clothing provided by so-and-so. And so our two cats are named Twinkle and Smoke. And so uh, at the end of every professional noticer episode, we have something, you know, it's like uh, Halloween candy provided by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. And so we always put the cats, and it's every now and then they go, who's Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills? It's our cats. So... <laughs> well, my cat Barney is right over there, and he's looking at me right now, like, "What in the world are you doing?" I act to try and get some kind of better lighting in here, which I never really succeeded. I'm sorry, but I even brought a couple of lamps over. <laughs> to be no, you look head. great, man. Oh, you thank you. Well, cats get so upset when you make a change like that. Barney's been upset that I moved the lamp to here. He's been going down there, looking at the wire across the floor, <laughs> looking up at me like, "Hey, this ain't supposed to be here." I love cats. I love cats. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cats, sure. you see cats, you ain't got to worry about cats because cats are like, you don't have to feed me. I'll kill something, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, yeah so, yeah, cats are great. So, hey, listen, when you, you got to send me that, all right, because okay. I really, really want to read it. Well, I'd and, like to read it just to, just for your opinion on it. And, and, and you know, knowing those publishers want me to make it into a children's book, I want maybe you could just say, hey, it ain't a children's book, man. Stay with it. Somebody will like it for what, what you wrote it for. Right. I mean, well, you know my story. Uh, the Traveler's yeah. Gift, 51 publishers mm -hmm. turned it down. And that's the number one. That's the book I've had that has sold millions of copies, 40-something languages. And 51 publishers said it wasn't worth putting on paper. So I always well, tell people, man. turned down as a part of being an author or a singer or a musician or a songwriter. I remember it one is. time, man, I wrote this song, and I thought it was the coolest thing. Jimmy Bowen was producing us at the time, and I did a demo on it and everything. And it was kind of a bluesy kind of thing, you know? And uh, you know the magic word in Nashville with a producer. If you start to play him a song and he listens to it all the way through, that's one good thing. But if he says, hey, play that again, whoa, you, you really think you got something. So I pushed the play button again, and about halfway through, he says, okay, okay, okay. I got to tell you. I love your voice on that song. That, that register you're singing in is really cool. The song kind of sucks, but but <laughs> you're singing. You need to cut a song with your voice like that. And I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> but that is it that but that is, you know, and that's part of what I think, you know, when I, I said a few minutes ago, I think you guys have you've had a part in whatever I have become because, oh, you know, you're, because you guys, you could feel your songs, your, your songs, you know, uh, fancy free dream on, uh, I'll be true to you. Uh, all those, those songs had heart in them. And so I slow down when I write because I want, I want to have that in what I do. I want people to 
to not only connect with their mind, but to connect with their heart. And I think that's what people have through the years with the Oak Ridge Boys, with your with your music, with you guys personally. Um, they feel well, so like we're like minds, family. Andy, because I could say everything exactly the same about you. I know your story. I've known you since you were younger, like you've known me. We've pulled jokes on each other. We've traveled together uh, through the years. We've become good friends. I'm so proud of you every time I get a new Andy Andrews book because I think <laughs> you're one of the best writers I read, and I, I do a lot of reading. And uh, uh, see, to, to me, I, I've had other ideas, and I've written some other things, but they were like tinkling symbols, though, because it was a story or something or an idea that didn't mean anything. I just think we're down here such a short time, Andy, that we need to do stuff that means something, that moves people. And that's what, you do. that's what you do. That's what Jones does in his books. He makes you think. He makes you see things from a different perspective. And your opening, your opening of that book, the, the old Indian, oh, my God, it reminded me of C.S. Lewis. You know how C.S. Lewis would write um, right. uh, something, that, and Aslan the Lion was Christ, and you could see all of the different parallels? Right. And I was reading that thing, and I got it right away. I knew what you were doing. And Thank I thought, you. boy, that's just, that's just an awesome thing right there, man. So. Yeah, yeah I, I, you, I have so much love and respect for you, man. You're a good friend. You've been a good friend for years, and are and a great success, great speaker, man. A great, great author, and well, uh, I think the world of you, Andy. We all do. I, we all do. I, I am honored to just uh, to have be been able to be around you guys enough to have a gold and silver medal story on you. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, I'll thank you, you so much. In the, in the in the in the bag there. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you so much for being with us and for taking the time. I, you know, you're, you're as a, as a writer, you've written for Huffington Post and Time. Uh, you've had double platinum albums, and so you certainly don't need to do any kind of publicity or anything. And you, you once again, you're doing me a favor, and I appreciate you being with me because I'm honored to be your well, friend. To me, my friend, it's just like sitting down with you as if you were at the house here. We had a good chat. Uh, other people yeah. are going to see it, and I hope they're moved by it. I hope they get a kick out of it. But I got to tell you, Andy, man, you mean the world to all of us, too. So for you to Thank invite you. me on and, and to be on with you, man, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Hey, how do people get in touch with you? How's, or how do they follow you? Do you well, you guys... for me, I'm only on Twitter. I, I'm not a big internet guy except for Twitter. And I'm at Joe Bonsall, J-O-E-B-O-N-S-A-L-L. And um, uh I have a website, josephbonzel.com. I, I, I haven't done too much on it lately, but it's there. And there's some writings on there that people might enjoy. And um, oakridgeboys.com or at yep. Oak Ridge Boys on Twitter. And yep. uh, the Oaks have a presence on Instagram and Facebook too, but I don't. And, we'll put uh, all that in the show notes. Okay, so. oakridgeboys.com is a, is, a, is a way to stay up to date with us, with us or yeah. follow us on it, Twitter. And I do the Oak Ridge Boy tweets and my tweets, which gets a little loony sometimes, but I, <laughs> but I do <laughs> Uh, and I, and I will just I will just tell everybody I you, you want to go uh, e either on uh, Joe's website or Amazon or wherever and find uh, GI Joe and Lily and find uh, from my perspective and e e those are those are so worth your time and you will grow as a person with both of those. So Thank you. and if anybody yeah. wants to learn about the Oak Ridge Boys, I have a book out called On the Road with the Oak Ridge Boys. That's a pretty fun read. I'm going to get that. I hadn't got that. It, it I'm going to get that. It's the Oak Ridge Boys from inside. It came out about three years ago in Harvest House Press. And uh, okay. All the Road with the Oak Ridge Boys by Joseph S. Bonzo. It's a fun, fun read. It really gives you a lot of insight as to what's going on and everything. And uh, gotcha. there, I, did you, could you hear that phone ringing? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, good. No. I, de I declined the call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Thank you so much. And, you, and I, I love you. Yeah, I, I love you guys, and it, we'll we'll talk soon. And I so. I just appreciate you very much. I love the Polly and the and the kids and and the, and and the, and the snake handler cats. The snake handler, Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Yeah, yes, yeah, of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Bye bye. Take care, man. Bye bye. <laughs>